Well, it seems like some wild conspiracy theories are being spread around concerning the newest generation of wireless technology. I suppose folks have had a lot of time to think while stuck at home and apparently even more time to watch lots of YouTube videos about the potential danger that the towers may or may not cause. It makes sense. While the world is rapidly changing, it would be helpful to have a scapegoat of some kind for plenty of negative things. But is there any substance behind these claims? Hello fellow friends and philosophers and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your Voice in the Void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be looking at a popular question. Should we be afraid of 5G networks? There are plenty of different categories of worry out there, and we try to address as many as possible. I don't claim to be an expert on any of these topics, and I would encourage you to do your own research as well to deepen your understanding of the subject matter. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more wireless wildness. Perfect. Let's get going. First, let's address what 5G is exactly. 5G doesn't stand for anything other than fifth generation. This is the fifth update to the mobile network that has been powering phones and similar devices for decades now. 1G was analog audio, 2G was digital audio, 3G was the introduction of wireless data, 4G brought us mobile broadband, and 5G is the latest iteration. As the new global wireless standard, it's meant to connect all sorts of new things and improve upon the connectivity between the Internet of Things. To ensure that it all works the way folks are hoping it does, 5G introduces lower latency, more reliability, higher bandwidth, and increased efficiency. All of this requires new hardware, though, which has led to the installation of new towers all over the place. It's possible that you first heard of this happening because people were attacking these towers. By enabling new and faster connections between between the Internet of Things, 5G developers hope that it'll be helpful for running things like self-driving cars and smart city technology. It's very fast, which allows things on the network to communicate in almost real time. To get this fast, 5G communicates on a higher frequency and requires more towers to be installed. This can be expensive, but also allows for more users to more reliably take advantage of the network. So far, it's begun a slow rollout, seeing deployment in a few countries, most notably South Korea, the US, and China. However, as I mentioned earlier, it all needs new infrastructure to run, so it's taking a while to install new towers and update older ones with new equipment. It will be a while before we see 5G operating at full capacity, but slowly more people are gaining access to it. As its deployment increases, concern among people will likely rise. This isn't a new phenomenon. Health and safety concerns have always increased around the time of new wireless generations. There are reasons and legitimate studies that raise concerns about 5G networks and their impact on the health of humans and other organisms. However, none show conclusive evidence that there are negative effects. Effects. Again, it's still early in the tech's lifespan and it's probably a good idea for people to do additional high quality research and get substantial answers. We don't have the answers for everything yet, but it's good to know the questions. As I've been saying, there have been many concerns brought up about 5G and we'll delve a little deeper into each one in a moment. The first concern I want to address is one that's been getting plenty of news coverage over the past little while. The connection between 5G networks and COVID-19. I will be as clear as possible. There is no scientific evidence of a link between 5G and coronavirus. None. Many folks have been making baseless claims, like that 5G networks outright cause COVID-19 and related symptoms. That is not how viruses work. The only way for you to contract a virus is to come in contact with another organism with that virus, whether it be through direct touch or swallowing or inhaling something with the virus. You cannot get a virus from radio waves. Other folks have been saying that 5G networks are weakening immune systems and making it more likely that a person gets infected. This is also untrue. The radio frequency, or RF waves, given off by cell phones do not have enough energy to damage DNA or affect the body in other such ways. These arguments are being lent credence by a correlation between two factors. See, 5G networks and infrastructure began to become more widely used and built around the same time that coronavirus originally broke out. People started to notice that places being hit hardest by COVID were also places that had recently had 5G technology installed. This is a common logical fallacy and is often used to correlate unrelated things. Correlation does not equal causation. The virus breaking out around the same time as 5G becoming more prevalent was just unfortunate timing. And the idea that large metropolitan areas with 5G were more vulnerable to COVID-19 has more to do with the fact that densely populated zones are basically virus breeding grounds. Plus, at this point, at least 184 countries have reported cases of the virus, while only a select few have any 5G infrastructure installed. Upgrades to wireless technology have been falsely linked to diseases before, and this isn't likely the last time we'll see it happen either. Many of the conspiracy theories linking 5G to COVID come from 
groups that have made arguments like this in the past, like claiming wireless airwaves caused cancer. So now that we've put the virus theory to bed, we should move on to concerns about radiation. Theories drawing lines between cancer and wireless have been around for a while, so it would make sense that a more powerful network be put under similar scrutiny. However, the International Commission for Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection has declared 5G completely safe. This, of course, is as long as the new guidelines they drew up are followed, but that should be the case. 5G has been in development for a long time now, and it took this commission seven years to complete their guidelines. In addition to this, tests from the UK communications regulator Ofcom found that EMF emissions from 5G are at a fraction of the highest safe level. As I stated earlier, the RF waves involved do not have enough energy to damage us. In fact, cell phones have energy levels lower than microwaves and TVs, and 5G is actually worse at penetrating objects than 4G, which is why more, smaller cell sites are being built close together. Again, 5G is still early in its lifespan, and more extensive studies do need to be done. But as of right now, there is nothing substantial indicating that 5G is physically harmful to humans. However, there are concerns beyond the physical. Some claims are being made that 5G may interrupt other wireless technology. A major concern right now involves the accuracy of weather reporting. 5G antennas transmit signals near the frequency that NASA and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration use to gather water vapor data. This could reduce the accuracy of weather reporting and long-term forecasting. Pro 5G folks claim that by using beam formatting technology that can maximize data transmission rates and minimize stray signals, ensuring that the frequencies aren't compromised. It's believed that the group has come to some sort of agreement, likely at the expense of a little 5G power. Keep an eye out for developments on that. The last big 5G concern has to do with security. While 5G should be more secure than 4G networks, there are some backdoor measures put in place by manufacturers and suppliers that should be exploited. Officials in the US are trying to make a case for them and their allies to ban Chinese telecom company Huawei from supplying infrastructure for 5G networks going forward. Security advisors say that supply chain concerns have to be taken seriously whether or not Huawei is involved. Backdoor access to lawful intercept interfaces could provide malicious actors with all sorts of information, from the location to a target, to information about calls, or even the ability to eavesdrop. Lawful intercept interfaces were added largely after the Patriot Act was passed, giving the state more access to electronic records in cases of suspected terrorist threat. US officials claim that China, especially Huawei, could have access to these if they're behind the manufacturing of parts and devices. China refutes these claims, saying that only certified personnel from network operators would be able to access such information. This is still playing out, so keep your eyes peeled for new developments. Now that we've taken a look at a bunch of different areas of interest, let's return to our original question. Should we be afraid of 5G networks? And the answer is... It depends. In terms of physical safety, 5G should be no more dangerous than any other wireless technology. But the introduction of new tech opens up the possibility of it being exploited or inadvertently affecting other technologies. What we should be afraid of is misinformation. So do your research and look for reputable sources for information. Just because you heard it online doesn't mean it's true. And I know how that sounds coming from me. So what'd you think of the video? What concerns you most about 5G? How do you think conspiracy theories spread so fast? Do you have a go-to quarantine snack? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more macroscopic ones from What If The Virus Mutates. Just some guy without a mustache says, if it turns people into zombies, the only cure can be found through Keanu Reeves' blood. Good luck getting Keanu to bleed. You'll be trying for a long time. Just some Bigfoot with internet access says, then that would mean we are just in the first few minutes of the movie, lol. The protagonist hasn't even shown up yet. Prologue gang. YGN Light says, better be lucky it's not a fungus virus. Last of Us. Yep, as fun as that game is, I don't think anybody's trying to live through all that. The Real Zlams says, that's where more memes come in. Well, how else would we deal with all this? Memes make the world go around. And Darwin Ang says, if I were to be isolated forever, I would play rock, paper, scissors with myself in front of the mirror and hope I win. I'd be scared if the man in the mirror threw anything different than what I did. That's when you know isolation has really taken its toll. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I float out of here in a giant bubble, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more gregarious developments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.